Good morning, y'all. <laughs> Sorry about that. I know I got I gotta let that go. I know. I know I've been uh, sharing words, messages of you know the the doomsday message of the good book, but I feel as if though it's something I need to do. I know we want to hear the good word that the Lord will bless you, the Lord will protect you, the Lord will lead you, the Lord will guide you. He'll do all of that. But I really feel that we're hearing enough of that from everybody else and that we need to hear, you know, the, the accountability, the responsibility for our actions. And so many people are sitting back and wondering why this country is in the state it's in. It's because of our sin. It's because of our wickedness. It's because we've gotten so far away from the Lord. So I'm in the book of Ezekiel and I'm reading and I just got confirmation right here for you. It's in the chapter three. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked person, you will surely die and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their life, that person, that wicked person will die for their sin and I will hold you accountable for their blood. So it's just like I've been saying the last couple of days, you know, we're, 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 we're Christians, we're churchgoers. Now people are going to say to me, oh, Ezekiel's in the Old Testament, that doesn't count. Horse, horse malarkey, horse baloney, malarkey. <laughs> if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then everything in his book is the same yesterday, today, and forever, okay? He is the same God. He doesn't change just because his son died. It doesn't change the fact of sin. It doesn't change sin. You're still under the curse of sin. You're still going to commit sin. And God doesn't want you to commit sin. God wants you to accept the free gift of salvation, receive forgiveness for those sins, and repent. See, everybody forgets about that word, repent. Everybody thinks that, oh, repent is... I'm sorry, God, forgive me, and then go out and do it again. No, no, repent is a turn. It's a 360, right? Right? It's, it's turned from your wicked way. So now, I told you a few weeks ago, I was in Jeremiah, I was in, I was in Isaiah. I really feel like the Lord wants me, and this is me. This is not, you know, this is, this is you, know, you know, I'm trying to, trying to live according to the good book, trying to live according to his word, trying to live my life. According to the words he has played out here, I'm trying to honor him in all that I do. I'm trying to trust him to get me through the things. I mean, he just brought me through some amazing stuff. But I'm going to read this one more time. Ezekiel 3, 16. Son of man. Me. I have made you a watchman. Me. For the people. For the people. Now, it mentions Israel. But I take Israel out because we are his people. Okay. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. Now, I know you're going to say to yourself, you can't take words away. You're right. You can't take words away. And I can't add it. But my, but, but I feel in my spirit that we're a lot like Israel was, right, in their day. They were wicked, rebellious. They were wandering in the wilderness. They forget that they, free, they refuse to listen to God. The Jewish people to this day are in rebellion because they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. They don't believe Jesus came to save them. So there's quite a few uh, Jewish people out there who are still hard-headed. And that uh, it, the board talks about that as well. But uh, it says here that if I don't warn you, if I, if, I just, if I just go the New Testament route and say that Jesus is, is the cure-all and that you're good to go and it doesn't matter how you live your life, then guess what? I am going to be held accountable. So... As a watchman, as a son of God, as a chaplain, as a father, as a husband, as a Christian, like I said the other day, it's our duty, it's our responsibility, it's my duty, it's my responsibility to warn you that you cannot continue to live in sin. You cannot continue to live in rebellion against God. You cannot continue to get up every single day and do life the way, any darn way you please. You know, you society says it's okay. Society, the enemy of, of society, the enemy of mankind has decided to, to convince you otherwise. But I have to tell you the truth, and it's not going to be popular. People don't like the truth. People, 
truth is very unpopular. It's the number one reason why Jesus doesn't go viral on, on the social media apps, because it's the truth. And when you hear the truth, it forces you to examine yourself. And that's what people don't want to do, because they love the pleasure of their sin more than they love of living in obedience and accordance to God's word. That's the problem. So you want to continue to, to run run wild and run wicked and okay, I you know, I got Jesus five years ago. I'm golden man, just get up in the morning. How many brothers I have talked to and said that said, you know, I go ahead and do this, but no problem. On I'm, I'm under the blood of Christ. I'm gonna say sorry in the morning. It doesn't work like that. It's called repentance. It's called turn, right? It says the old things have passed away. All things have become new. So maybe, just maybe, if you're still living in the old things, you might need to recommit yourself to Christ because obviously there wasn't a true circumcision of the flesh, a circumcision of the heart, right? There wasn't a true conversion. You know, when you to your knees and brokenness and in despair and 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 the sin the the weight of sin and guilt and sorrow is just so heavy on your back and you you hit your knees and you cry out to Jesus to save you and you ask Jesus to cleanse you and to forgive you at that point you receive the Holy Spirit and at that point you're no longer supposed to go back to the way you lived right you're supposed to live in the new, right? You're a new creation in Christ. You're a new creature, right? We're not the old. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. So if you're still living in sin, you still live in the way you used to live, then maybe you need to do some self-examination. And when I'm sitting here and I'm reading to you that it's my responsibility and that I'm going to be held accountable, the blood is going to be on my hands because I sat here on, on these platforms and said, it's okay. God loves you. Just ask him to forgive you and you're fine. You're going to do well and things are going to be great for you and you're going to be blessed. Oh, you're still stealing. Oh, you're still cheating. Oh, you're still lying. Oh, you're still, yeah, you'll be fine. Don't worry. It's a free gift. God knows you're not perfect. It's okay. We all fall short of the glory of God. No worries. Jesus took it all to the cross. You go right ahead with your bad self and keep on doing what you're doing. That is a that is a life in a bit of hell. And and unfortunately, I believe most of the churches have convinced people that that's the truth. That's the way it's worked. The way it works. No, it doesn't work like that. We receive Christ. Once we receive Christ, our old ways of doing things. See, the, 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 the sin, if it's a true conversion, a true circumcision of the heart and the flesh, the sin will lose its pull. It will lose its power over your life. That's what happens. That's how you know it's a true conversion. Because the old things that you used to do, that you used to find enjoyable, you no longer find enjoyable. That's because the Holy Spirit is inside of you working out your sanctification, working out your, you're working out, working things out. He's, he's, he's removing the sin. He's getting the impurities out of you. That's what he's doing. So when you, in a true conversion, you no longer want to sin. You want to live for God. You want to live for Jesus. You want to live according to the spirit. You want to honor God. You want to do what's right in God's sight. So it's my job and my duty to correct that incorrect thinking, to try and because I was I was one hundred seventy seven percent guilty of that. I was the king of the backslider for a long time because I didn't get it. I didn't get it, and I didn't repent, and I didn't truly repent, and I didn't really, honestly surrender the things that were holding me captive. You know, and uh, you know, by God's grace, I'm not perfect, not perfect. But I am trying super, super, super hard with all that I am to trust the Holy Spirit to help me to live according to the good book. Now, here's the awesome part about that. If we can finally let the Holy Spirit have complete and total control of our minds, thirds, words, and minds, thoughts, words, and actions, if we can surrender ourselves completely and totally to God in Christ and let him to use us as a vessel, then the blessings will be unfathomable.
because now God can can use you. You're now a pure vessel in his hands, right? And he's going to do amazing and mighty things through you. But until he can get all that junk out of the way, he's not going to be able to use you. So all that being said, Jesus Christ does save, but you need to do a 360 and turn. And as a watchman and as a son and as a worker of God, as a servant of God, it's my duty to warn you because I don't want your blood on my hands. You keep sinning. You're going to lose. And in the end, you're going to lose your soul. There's no doubt about that. So be encouraged today. Not a popular message, but one that needs to be said. God bless you. Have a great day.